Welcome back to Paul's Hardware, everyone. It is time for another Probing Paul. That is my monthly Q&A series that I totally forgot to do last month, so doing it again. It's March, and uh, today I'm gonna talk about graphics cards, because that's what's on a lot of people's minds. For example, what do I do with uh, maybe extra graphics cards that I have lying around? And perhaps more importantly, for any of you guys who need a graphics card out there right now, I'm gonna go over my best advice for actually finding one, or at least the best you could possibly do, given the situation. Excellent! Corsair has expanded their new case lineup with the 5000 series, a premium chassis with three versions available, the sleek 5000D, the 5000D Airflow, and the 5000X with tempered glass panels and three 120mm air guide RGB fans. A spacious interior provides room for multiple radiators or up to 10 120mm fans, and there are tons of convenient features for building like hinged removable panels, flexible storage options for hard drives or SSDs, and rapid route cable management guides. Available in black or white, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. If you'd like to ask me a question for my Q&A series, you can leave that in the comments section down below. Also, I'll put timestamps down there so you can jump to questions that you like. And all of the questions for today were taken from the last Probing Paul, which was at the end of January. Speaking of which, we start the show by looking back at past Probing Pauls. There's a playlist if you guys want to check them out, but uh, they're all numbered and stuff too, so they can be sequential. Let's get to it with the first question for today. And this is actually sort of a generic question. I chose this to represent a question I get very often, which is about graphics card launches for the RTX 3060 or the AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT, people are always like, will you have a contest? Will you give one away? Just to be perfectly honest, giveaways can be a struggle at times. And I've considered in the past doing a video specifically about what makes doing a giveaway suck at times as the giveaway-er. But apart from taking something like a graphics card that I have on hand and then offering it to you know people in the US or outside of the US, taking the time to do the follow-up and packing things up and shipping them out and making sure that I have uh, confirmed and validated a winner and all that stuff, it just takes a little bit of time and that's something I'm okay to deal with but there's also invariably uh, like 95 or 98 percent of the people who are like awesome giveaway thanks for providing this and then there's like that small percentage of people that dives in and says oh it's not available in my region so I hate you or people say you're just doing this for clout or for views or something like that which um, I, I have to admit that I make all of my videos for views so they always get me with that one but that said I do have a lot of graphics cards some are right behind me I have a lot more that are over there and what I try to do as a reviewer is keep at least one model of each different type of graphics card on hand. So if I ever need to go back and do comparative testing for older models, I have the option to do that. That's why I have like a single GTX 970 that's still here that I can pull out and test if I need to. So I guess to sort of summarize my answer to this question is I have been thinking about doing giveaways more recently because when I have graphics cards that are sitting here and there is a GPU shortage, a part of my mind says, you should get those graphics cards to some gamers, to some people who will enjoy them. So here's my plan. I am doing an unboxing video very soon, so stay tuned for that. It should be up in a few days. So if possible, anytime that I have more than one version of a specific GPU available and I don't have anything planned for that other one, I will try my best to do a giveaway. And I'm not making any specific promises here. I'll talk about this a little bit more when I do that unboxing video, but uh, I'll try to do something that's global and something maybe that's US only. And I might even give them away in other ways other than just like, you know, a random picked uh, drawing that people enter or something like that. I have a few different things on my mind. So I guess yes would be the answer to your question. Maybe not specifically for the 3060 because I do only have one of those right now. But I do want to share the wealth, so to speak. So that is on my mind. Next question here is from Mark Wilson. Hey Mark, I uh, hope your new, new year is going well since this was from back in January. What's your advice for someone who's been waiting to build their new computer and has everything ready to go except the GPU? I've been waiting to get my hands on a newer GPU for some time now and Mark, uh, there's probably a good chance that you are still in this situation a couple months later. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys different three, three different possible things you could do to get a GPU. One is to try to just buy one. And the best way to do that might be the Newegg Shuffle right now. I tried to pull this up with just a few seconds left because it was ending this morning as I was starting to film this video. So every single day you need to go and check the Newegg Shuffle and you can enter to not win, but enter to buy a graphics card at MSRP and they'll list the ones that they have available. They also have PlayStation deals going on here sometimes, but here you can see they have like a 3080 and a 3070 and I guess another 3070. So people could go select those and then they do a drawing and then people are notified and then you can go and place the order. And that I think is probably the best option right now to actually buy one at MSRP. The other option might be to try like Micro Center and going and waiting in line, but it's hard to know when Micro Center is actually going to be getting stopped.
stock in. And I've also heard reports from people who went to Micro Center, waited overnight, and then the next morning they're like, we don't have any GPUs arriving today, so sorry. I've also recommended the EVGA Q system before, but uh, as time has gone on, it seems like there are more and more people who signed up for that, even way back when like the 3080 and 3070 originally launched, who still haven't gotten GPUs. Another resource you can try is now in stock.net. And I've only just uh, sort of browsed this website a little bit, so uh, do take things with a grain of salt, but they have listings, for example, for an NVIDIA RTX 3080, and it will show you whether it's out of stock or not. And as you can see, these are all out of stock. You could also try the hardware swap subreddits or going for another uh, used card of some variety. Even on hardware swap, these cards are still gonna sell for a pretty penny though, because people know what people are willing to pay for the graphics cards. So this sort of translates over into your second option, which is to just bite the bullet and pay two or three or four times what the MSRP should be for your graphics card. I do not recommend that but I do recognize that it is an option for people who are desperate, especially if you've been waiting for months and months. Here on eBay, for example, 3060 Ti's are currently selling for 1200 to $1,400, which is just absurd. And then your third option, I think, is just to wait, or uh, if you don't have a graphics card at all, look for something that's really low end that you can just get something functional with. Something like a 1050 or a 1050 Ti, for example, might be a solution for you there. And then the rumor that's been uh, percolating a little bit more recently is that we're looking at uh, Q3, or basically the second half of the year, which doesn't start until the end of June or beginning of July, so that still is uh, a decent chunk of time to wait, but there does appeared to be some rumblings about some maybe good news on the horizon. So maybe it'll be an awesome summer and after uh, everyone being inside all year last year, then uh, this year you can get a new graphics card at the beginning of summer and have a reason to stay inside for a little bit longer. Don't do that though. Go outside. Uh, let's move on to the next question. Smouse Games says, Probe and Paul question, I'm looking to build a Threadripper PC for editing at CES AMD revealed Threadripper Pro, but it's a Zen 2 processor. Is there any word on a Zen 3 Threadripper coming out soon or should I just build a 3000 series Threadripper build? I have also been kind of on the lookout for Threadripper 5000 series, I guess. It's, it's hard to explain exactly. So when or if a Threadripper based on Zen 3 comes out, they'll probably be called the Threadripper 5000 series series, which will align it with the current AMD Ryzen CPUs, which are also 5000 series, like the 5950X, 5900X, and so on. All of those are based on Zen 3, which is 7 nanometer microarchitecture, and it is the newer 7 nanometer archi architecture versus Zen 2, which were the first CPUs that were built on 7 nanometer. But those were actually called AMD Ryzen 3000 series processors. So you can kind of see how if you're looking at the microarchitecture name Zen, Zen Plus, Zen 2, Zen 3 versus the actual SKUs, it gets a little confusing there. That said, what we're talking about is Threadripper CPUs based on the newest seven nanometer microarchitecture, which is what the AMD Ryzen 5000 series CPUs are currently based on. And there has been very little info to go on for these CPUs. And there's there might be a reason for that. Uh, AMD has been having a lot of success with their Epic CPUs, which, which is what they call their server CPUs. And Epic Milan is now out and you can actually also buy Epic Milan on even as an end user. And here you can see uh, Zen 3 is what uh, the newest Epic Milan CPUs are, are based on. It goes up to 64 cores and 128 threads, eight channel memory. It's pretty insane when it comes to a server platform what these chips are capable of. At the same time, the only news I spotted that was somewhat recent about Zen 3 Threadripper or Threadripper 5000 series is from back in January. And these are some not so optimistic rumors about them bringing back a 16 core version, which might seem like a little bit of a regression. Part of this is based on a tweet by Yuri Bubli, who does the uh, Ryzen uh, memory tool, for example. Uh, but he's just pointing out that if they're doing 16 core, it might say certain things about what their plans are for Threadripper 5000 series. So what I think all this boils down to is the way that AMD builds their products. All of them, whether you're talking about a Ryzen 5000 series CPU or a Threadripper CPU or the AMD Epic CPUs for servers are all built on these little chiplets, uh, little eight core chiplets, and they can add one or more of those to make an eight core, a 16 core, a 32 core, up to a 64 core processor. Now TSMC actually manufactures these and every time T TSMC spits out a wafer, uh, they test the little chiplets and some of them work better than others. So some of them, only four of the cores work and some of them all eight cores work and some of them can run at higher frequencies and some of them can only handle lower 
lower frequencies. So there's a huge demand for those chiplets across a range of AMD products, and TSMC only has a finite amount of manufacturing capability, and they are also building stuff for other things too, for AMD Radeon GPUs, as well as all the new Xboxes and Playstations out there. So you can see why there might be a limited number of these chips available. So from AMD's standpoint, they have a limited number of these chips. They're probably gonna put them in the things that will make them the most money. And I think that is Epic in the server class where AMD makes a lot more money. And I think that's also reflected in the Ryzen availability right now where you can pretty easily find 5600X and 5800X CPUs, but the more desirable 5900X and 5950Xs, which require chiplets that perform a little bit better in terms of yields, I have a feeling that those are getting uh, shuffled over to the Epic side of things where they can sell them for more money rather than increasing availability of the chips that uh, are a little bit more desirable for consumers. And also probably why they haven't even bothered uh, announcing or launching or distributing some rumors about Threadripper Zen 3 5000 series because they might not even know when things will ease up enough for them to have enough chips to create those products. So for now, if you want something really high core and thread count, you should probably just go for a Threadripper 3000 series CPU. If you need even more than that, AMD recently made Threadripper Pro 3000 series CPUs available a little bit more widely to consumers rather than just system integrators. So that's an option too. Although again, the price creeps up with those. They put the word pro on that and that makes it much more expensive. And yeah, that's my best explanation for uh, Zen 3 based Threadripper and why we haven't heard much about it so far. But uh, who knows, who knows, maybe AMD will announce something soon. But like I said, the fact that there aren't, e aren't even really rumors going on about this much right now means that it's probably pretty far off. Next question here from Testin Plasma. What power plan should you use specifically on Ryzen for my case? I bring this up because I think it's a question that came up more often in the past few years, and now it's sort of changed just a little bit. Here is a thread over on the AMD subreddit, and this is from uh, Robert Halleck, and he's talking about uh, the different variances and stuff like that, and the reason why you might want to use use a specialized power plan for Ryzen as opposed to just the built-in uh, Windows power, power plans. There are some interesting nuts and bolts type things that uh, Robert goes over in that post, but uh, that information is also a little bit outdated. But right now, what you should do if you have an AMD Ryzen CPU is uh, update your motherboard's UEFI to make sure you're running the latest microcode, and you should also uh, update your chip chipset drivers or install your chipset drivers from AMD, not just the default Windows ones that install if you have never gone about doing that. In the past, installing that package would also install an AMD Ryzen balanced power plan that you could select in Windows, but that's not needed anymore. Fortunately, Microsoft realized that AMD's popularity has been growing for some time now, so they've worked with them, and now through just Windows updates, uh, you can just use the basic or the uh, high performance power plan that's built into Windows, and you don't need to use a special one anymore. So that's that's convenient. Next question here from Cyan Ghosh. Hey Paul, when will you be building the epic water-cooled all AMD build, the one that was sent over by EK? That is from this unboxing video that I did, uh, gosh, all the way back in November now, where uh, EK sent this crazy big kit of water cooling gear. It included an X570 block, it included a, a GPU block for the 6900 XT, which I believe also fits on the 6800 XT. Actually, this is a reservoir. Um, so a really cool kit of stuff that they included there. And I unbox it and I was like, I'm gonna build an all AMD system out of this. And I bring it up now so I can answer your question because I am actually moving forward with it. Uh, you know, sometimes these things go a little bit slow, but I actually like have three-ish uh, system builds that I'm working on right now. Part of that unboxing video that I already referenced, which should be up in a couple days, is gonna go over some of the parts for that build, which have started to arrive. I'm going for a white build with like black and silver and red accents. Uh, the case is going to be the Lian Li 011 Mini, uh, which can support a full-size ATX motherboard, but I'm probably gonna go micro ATX or mini ITX if I can find a good board that maybe has white accents. That's actually one of the last things I need to figure out is uh, which specific motherboard I'm gonna use for that build. But if that is something that you remember me talking talking about and you're waiting on, I'm sorry for the delay, but uh, it is still happening happening soon. Here's a question from Ethan R. What are your thoughts on putting models, uh, like anime or Gundam, inside your enclosure to complement or complete build themes? For some reason, I feel like I've never addressed this, but I think it's an awesome idea. Actually, I think it's a wonderful idea, and it's something that I've never really done myself. And I hate the way Google Images does the images now where they're over on the side, but you guys get the idea. You know, sometimes you have the big head characters or whatever. Got your anime characters or whatnot. You can put inside the PC, or you can put on top of the PC, 
see. I like this one, they have a little Star Wars sort of uh, lightsaber battle going on down here in the bo bottom of a Shift X. And since a lot of builds can seem pretty cookie cutter sometimes if you're using the same sort of set of components, it's a way to distinguish things and uh, make your build stand out a little bit more. Personalization, I think it goes along with a lot of the reasons that people build their own PCs in the first place. And if you're at all concerned about like airflow, Linus has done a series and there have been a few other follow-ups on that where uh, airflow is not necessarily impeded by putting characters or something like this in your case. You can actually have a pretty good amount of obstruction within your case, even with poor cable management. And as long as you have proper intake and exhaust fans, uh, you should still have decent airflow. Thank you for that question though, Ethan. Next is AZ Motorhead who says, hey Paul, idea for a mini series of videos. Have you considered building a studio or workshop in your backyard to get some of the clutter out of your garage? You're very right that my garage is very cluttered. Like you can look this pile of stuff behind me, that's not supposed to be there. That's there because I don't have anywhere else good to put it. But another reason that I answered this question is that I'm actually starting to move forward yet again with stuff that had to be delayed last year. So at the end of 2019, I had a bunch of work done, including uh, this installation, which was a patio cover that went up in my backyard, on, sort of on the side yard. And that's now a pretty big area over there that's at least somewhat protected from the weather. I had a real t hard time putting some rain gutters up underneath there as well, but fortunately it's not nearly as clean as it is in this shot, but uh, that's been working well for the past year or so. So I guess to answer your question, uh, yes, I totally plan to do that. Uh, planned to do it last year, but then, you know, all of the complications and everything from 2020 meant that I wasn't able to invest much time in it. But now I'm finally feeling like uh, some of that time is being clawed back. So I've actually just recently cleared some more stuff out. It was just temporary storage out there for a lot of stuff that we couldn't get rid of during the pandemic. And what I really want to do with that space long term is uh, set it up so I can do some like woodworking projects, home improvement projects and that kind of thing. And I have an actual space to do that that's covered. And it's also not in the garage where I would kick up a bunch of sawdust. So looking forward to a lot of that stuff. Final question is not really a question. I guess it's sort of a follow up from last month because I talked about my hair. Somebody asked about my hair and I pointed out that I just buzz my hair with clippers every few weeks. So I wanted to highlight a few comments just pointing out that uh, Apparently we have the same barber, me, me and a lot of you viewers out there. So um, make sure you tip them well. And I think that's gonna wrap it up for this Probing Paul. So if you guys have questions for me for next month, and yes, I am gonna be doing this next month. I'm not gonna skip like I did in February. Leave them in the comments section down below. Also, you can find timestamps down there and links to some of the uh, articles and stuff that I showed you today. If you're interested in merch, check out my store at paulshardware.net. You can buy shirts and mugs and pint glasses. I have new beer sets with uh, bamboo coasters that are really nice. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, uh, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. I'll all that good stuff that YouTubers say at the end of videos. That's all for this one. Thanks again for watching guys. We'll see you next time.